people need multiple ways to get access to this information, and we have to make it easy for them right. so that they can participate. Sure. And the interactive stuff I'm hoping to really expand on, but I can't really, it's a little bit top secret right now, but basically I want to you know, create a virtual public newsroom where um, readers can participate in the news gathering process. That's exciting. Yeah, it could be uh, if I can make it work on the tech end. You well, know. It's, um, I'm an English major. I'm not a techie, <laughs> so I have to rely on my friends, you know, like Josh Larkin and Dan Allen, who've just been so generous with their time. I mean, they've volunteered so much time, you know, as has um, Mel Huff, who has donated wonderful stories, in-depth stories about. Um, you know, the treatment of prisoner, uh, of mentally ill prisoners in Vermont's correctional system. And, you know, everyone on the board is, has been involved in reading copy. And, mm -hmm. and Nick Montserrat actually edits my stuff. So, I mean, which is wonderful. I have an editor watching my back. Because everyone, you know, misses things or makes mistakes. And that's what editors are for. And, right. and so that's also a difference between our site, which is a news site, and the blogosphere. Sure. You know, I would feel so exposed just to post things, you know, without any vetting. I do post captions <laughs> for my videos <laughs> on my own. I feel like I can handle that, but, you know, stories really need to be read by someone. So um, I feel very lucky to have such a supportive group of, of friends and colleagues who are willing to help and um, to pitch in like this. And I think it's because we all really care. You know, we all really care about the future of journalism and of democracy in this state. And, you know, we all feel that we need more information, not less. Right. We don't want to compete with the other news outlets. We really don't. I mean, I know there's some competition in terms of eyeballs. You know, people only have so much time in a given day. But um, we really want to be part of the solution. Right. You know, not, right. Um, we don't want to go head to head with. Sure. The and my, other my understanding, actually, that. A lot of newspaper revenue that's bled away is actually bled away from really online classifieds like Craigslist and stuff. It's not uh, Vermont Daily Briefings or Green Mountain Daily's little web ads on the side that are even that's in the right. same competitive pool with the Times Argus or the Free Press. That's so. absolutely true. I mean, I think Craigslist is just really. It's killed newspapers. There's all no over the sort country. of used car section in the back <laughs> of the paper anymore. It's like, it's 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 elsewhere. That was a huge source of income for all newspapers, alternative and mm -hmm. you know weeklies, dailies. Mm -hmm. You know, classifieds were huge. Right. So yeah. Now when you're a, you're talking about that, um, the the sort of un, unfiltering. Mm -hmm. I, I I can imagine as a as a, a print journalist, you're given how many words, how many columns, and then yeah. a candidate talks for 25 minutes and fields eight questions, and you have to pick the four quotes that are, you know, exactly. decided to be most um, representative of what they say. I mean, that just seems yeah. like a real um, difficult process. And then it's sort it of is. inevitable at the end that the the candidate themselves is, wait a second, I said it like this, or I said it like that, or you missed the lead, or, you know, it just seems. So here's, here's the full, you know, a podcast or a, um, That's right. actual, actual video, of it. and then. Um, well, hopefully people have, I mean, I think some candidates talk longer than others. Mm -hmm. You know, Susan Bartlett did her sh whole spiel in less than nine minutes, so I was able to get the whole thing up. You mm -hmm. know, other candidates, uh, you know, I think. Um, Peter Shumlin, his introduction was longer, and same with Matt Dunn, and so it was harder to get the whole thing up. So what I have right now on the site is really just the first 10 minutes, you know, whatever I could get right. is posted. And um, ideally, I'd like to um, separate the video by question. And I will be doing that with that original video um, material that I have. I haven't had time yet, but I'm going to divide the questions up and so I'm going to um, edit it so that you can see, you know, what um, Deb Markowitz, what um, Pat Parent over Doug Racine, mm -hmm. um, Shumlin, Dunn, and Bartlett all had to say about Vermont Yankee. Okay. So that you'll get the full picture specific on a specific issue. question Great. or current use Great. or um, conservation. These were all issues that were brought up at the at that at that particular conference, the Environmental Action Conference, mm -hmm. and they're big questions for Vermont. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
at a time when um, you know, the, the budget is going to have to be seriously slashed, um, you know, how are we going to uphold our envi environmental um, values mm -hmm. um, you know, in the, in, under those circumstances? It's, it's a really tough question. Actually, in particular, and with the dairy crisis, you're building a real, um, through a series of articles, you're really building a track record on um, following what's going on with the sort of impossibility of our dairy farmers to keep pace with um, price versus cost is just a, it's a losing equation right now and mm -hmm. um, that's you've done a fantastic job following that I don't know if you oh, want to thanks. talk a, a little bit about that but that's not the sure. the hoopla of, of a campaign it's really the the day-to-day -day. how are the how are the numbers coming out for a real yeah. core segment of our, our economy um, and communities yeah, it's really, the, I think um, people underestimate um, the dairy industry and what it contributes to, not only to our working landscape, as it's called, but also to um, our small town economies around the state. It's a significant driver. And, um, you know, when, when farmers are losing anywhere from $10,000 a month to $100,000 a month, depending on the size of the farm, over a long period of time, I mean, we're talking seven, eight months, they can't pay their, their grain dealers. They can't get their tractors right. repaired. They can't... Ripples right through the It town. ripples right through the economies yeah. of some small towns yeah. in the state. And um, not to mention the fact that it's devastating for the families themselves. Um, and um, so I wanted to illustrate that reality through a, a series of stories, and I decided to take what is really an overwhelming topic. If you've ever really looked into <clears throat> the federal subsidies and the this and the that, and it's a it's incredibly complicated. I mean, some people say that there are only three people in the world who understand milk pricing <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's really arcane, and it, you know the the system dates back to the 30s, and they, it's it's a nightmare. I mean, it's really a nightmare to understand. I don't pretend to understand that right. part of it. But um, even other facets of it are, are really complicated. And dairy farmers are, are really, uh, the, the, the dairy farmers in Vermont um, are really good managers. And they're very smart people. And they juggle a lot of stuff. I mean, they have to be experts at, um, you know, at, at animal management. They have to understand the science of, of crop rotation and they feeds. have to be accountants and yeah they have yeah. to be accountants and they and they also um you know need to be able to uh manage lots of people you know they have to it's not just animals mm -hmm. they're managing it's also people mm -hmm. so it, it's really it's a tough job description and to see them suffering when they work so hard and so many long at hours. At the end of the day, right? It's really, it's terrible. Yeah. And I don't see it ending. I mean, I think at this point, um, they're talking about the uh, Economic Research Service, which is an arm of the USDA. Their predictions for milk prices aren't really going up much. I mean, they'll top out. When I talked to Diane Bothfeld last week, she thinks that at this point, they're saying, and this is a crapshoot, right? Nobody knows what's really going to be, but the predictions are, you know, maybe an average of sixteen fifty um, per hundred weight. Now, hundred weight's eleven point six gallons of milk, and if, um, and that may not even happen. A, one farmer told me that Dairy Farmers of America in their newsletter predicted the prices could be anywhere between thirteen dollars a hundred weight and seventeen dollars a hundred weight. So no one really knows. Um, and if there are break-even prices for the coming year, um, they're not going to be able to get themselves out of debt. I talked to another farmer who said crude, that they're in right? the same kind of debt they were 30 years ago when they started farming. You know, when they first bought their farm, first in invested in new barns and cows and all that. It's like square one. It's like square one for everyone. Uh, and I'm, if you're late in your career, forget about it. Yeah. Are we done? Yeah, I'm getting the word. I wish we could keep going because this is, I mean, this is, we're talking about in depth here. We had a half hour, but um, yeah. so visit v, uh, vtdigger.org and check out some of the articles.